بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين I am Professor Sayyid Ali Hazar and I was talking about one of the uh, family that is Shilmaria and I have already said that the Shilmarias they are very small bacteria intracellular obligates and they are parasitic in nature they dependent on the metabolism of the cells which they are infected. There are three important shilmalia which are important to cause the disease in the humans. One was, I already told you, the, the commonest one is the shilmalia trichomatis. The second one is the shilmalia pneumonia. And third one is the shilmalia sitakai. I am taking today the shilmalia and pneumonia. Now, Shilmaria pneumonia. What is the importance of Shilmaria pneumonia? Is this that it is usually misdiagnosed, underdiagnosed, or people who are making the differential diagnosis of pneumonia they often forget this important uh, bacteria. Shilmaria pneumonia causing in most of the geographical areas atypical pneumonia but in some areas it is the uh, typical pneumonia that is community acquired pneumonias are dividing into two one is typical which are typical to the area and second one is atypical which is atypical to that area the shilmaria pneumonia in our country is, is, a, is a one of the cause of the atypical pneumonia Shilmaria pneumonia is a species of the Shilmaria, an obligate intercellular bacterium. I already said it is obligate. Intercellular bacterium that infects humans and its major cause of pneumonia. The target tissue in this disease is, are the lungs. It was known as the Taiwan Acute Respiratory Agent Tuar, that is called, at one time. From the names of the two original isolates, Taiwan, 183 and an acute respiratory isolate designated AR39. Acute respiratory 339. Briefly, it was known as the Shalmadophilia pneumonia at one time, and then that name is used as an alternative in some sources, or it is commonly known as Shalmadia pneumonia. In some cases, to avoid confusion, both names are given. That is Shilmarophilia pneumonia or Shilmaria pneumonia. The microbiology is that it is a complex life cycle and must infect another cell to reproduce. The, it is classified as obligate intercellular pathogen. The full genome sequence of the organism was published in 1999. Important thing that it also infects the and causes the disease in koalas and amyloid the boas, that is the snakes, the Corollus canis, and iguanas, and shamrons, and frogs, and turtles, they are all, you know, these are the, basically, the, the, the uh, animals of the forest, and the nearby population. So it may be a zoonotic disease in those areas where these animals are found. They are reptiles actually, basically repti reptiles are the uh, classification in which you put that they are the reservoir of infection. And this is the intracellular obligate, this is the bronchus, this is bronchial cells which are seen here inside it, this is the organism which is there. There are two types. One is elementary bodies and one are reticulate bodies. The elementary bodies are infective and completing its cycle by, or by in interacting with the other nearby cells. While reticulate bodies are in a replicative phase and they will become elementary bodies afterwards. So by binary fission 
the life cycle of pathogenesis is that the Chirmaria pneumonia is a small gram negative bacterium. It is 0.2 to 1 micrometer that undergoes several transformations during its life cycle. It exists as an antibody, I already said, between the hosts. The element body is not biologically active, but it is resistant to the environmental stresses and can survive outside the host from a limited time. So if you, the, if you uh, spit it out by cough, it will, will take hardly 10 minutes there, not more than that. In spite of the tuberculosis, will be actually mixed with the mud or other things and it can be infective to several years. I compare this organism with the mycobacterium tuberculosis. The elementary body travels from an infected person from the lungs of an uninfected person in small droplets, so it is a droplet infection responsible for the infection. Once in the lung, the elementary body is taken up by the cells in a pouch called an endosome by the process called phagocytosis. However, the elementary body is not destroyed by the fusion with the lysosome, although it should kill. It will not kill because it is a resistant elementary body and is, is, a, and is typical of the phagocytosis material. And instead, it transforms into the reticulate body. And reticulate bodies are the replicating, begins to replicate within the endosome. So a layer is formed and the replicate reticulate bodies are forming. Although they are, they are not infective to the nearby cells. Otherwise they have to convert first to the elementary bodies. The reticulate body must use some of the host cellular metabolism to complete its replication all dependent on the metabolism of the infected cell. That is why they are parasites. The reticulate bodies then convert back to the elementary bodies and are released back into the lung, often after causing the death of the whole cell. Although the apoptosis is delayed in this case. The elementary bodies are thereafter able to infect new cells either in the same organism or in a new host. That the life cycle of the Shilmaria pneumonia is divided between the elementary body which is able to infect new hosts but cannot replicate and the reticulate body which replicates actually but is not able to cause a new infection otherwise it should, it should convert into the elementary body to infect the host cell. The presentation and associations. This is a very very important point and very interesting also. The Shilmaria pneumonia is a common cause of the pneumonia around the world, as the geography is concerned. It is typically acquired by otherwise healthy people and is a form of a community called pneumonia. Typical in some area and atypical in some area. It is treatment and diagnosis are different from the historically recognized causes such as streptococcus pneumonia because it does not gram stain well and because the a Shilmaria pneumonia bacteria is very different from the many other bacteria causing pneumonia. In the earlier days, it was even thought to be a virus at one time. The pneumonia caused by the Shilmaria is characterized as the atypical pneumonia in most of the countries, but not all countries. One meta-analysis of the serological data compa comparing the prior Shilmaria pneumonia infection in the patient with and without the lung cancer found results suggesting prior infection was associated with an increased risk of developing lung cancer. So it may be a precipitating cause for the carcinoma bronchus in research into the association between the Shilmaria pneumonia infection and the atherosclerosis. This is interesting. And the coronary artery disease, serological testing, direct pathology analysis, what is called the atherosclerotic plaque and atherosclerosis. They found that they are present inside the erythromethyl or atherosclerotic plaque in, in about you say 20 to 30 percent of cases in the daily studies. But not, not all. So at one time definitely this is 
the result the diseases that is uh, the result of coronary artery disease atherosclerosis etc they are the directly associated with the cardiovascular illness the position of the ldl cholesterol between the tunica in thyma and tunica media to start the process the initiating process probably it is due to the shimari pneumonia uh, uh, according to the one study so it is a microbiological cause of it may be in future it may be you know proved that the atherosclerosis or coronary coronary artery disease may be associated with the microbiological infection machine mad pneumonia infection increases the adherence of the macrophages to the endothelial cells in the vitro and aorta ex vivo however most current research data are insufficient they were not, not completed and do not define how often shilmadi pneumonia is found in is 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 it roma or the normal vascular tissue because the study is not completed 100% results are not achieved but at one time i hope so that they will achieve shilmadi pneumonia has also been found in the cerebrus from fluid association this is the association where the patient diagnosed with the multiple sclerosis And this is another interesting point. Multiple sclerosis is actually autoimmune type of a disease. Shilmaria pneumonia infection was first associated with the wheezing, asthmatic bronchitis, and other onset asthma. It is associated with the asthma. It is mean type two asthma, probably, which is which are not associated with the IgE antibody. it may be associated with it with the disease subsequent studies of the bronchiolar lavage fluid from the pediatric patient with asthma and also other severe chronic respiratory illnesses have demonstrated that over 50% have evidence of the shilmadi pneumonia by direct organism identification very important uh, finding the shilmadi pneumonia infection triggers acute wheezing if it becomes chronic it is diagnosed as asthma these observations suggest that the shilmadi pneumonia infection is capable of causing to trotian manifestation of chronic respiratory illness which lead to asthma it is possible in the future they are also involving in the copd we don't know the research is going on so organism is that is why important is <coughs> association is important which i have just said Atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease, multiple myeloma, bronchial asthma may be associated. The <coughs> diagnosis is direct or indirect. Any shilmadia can be diagnosed by nucleic acid amplification test, or rather, the because of the this test is very very accurate and very very rarely it is false negative. PCR test is an example of a nucleic acid amplification test in our country. This test can also be done on the urine sample, urethral swabs in the men, or cervical or vaginal swabs in the women. In case of the Shilmaria trachomatis is concerned, the nucleic acid hybridization test DNA probe in the result to find the Shilmaria DNA. A probe test is very accurate, but is not as sensitive. Sensitivity is less than the nucleic acid amplification test. about the elisa is concerned find substances the shilmadia antigen that trigger the immune response to the shilmadia infection shilmadia elementary body you have to write the shilmadia antibody elementary body elisa would be used to stratify different stages of infection based upon the immunoglobulin gamma status of the infected individuals so the gamma immun immun immunoglobulin is important if it is raised specifically with the raza we will do the raza with iga or ig g or igm but not the gamma whole gamma chain we do not do it the direct process and the very test also find the shilmadia antigens if you would do the dfa 
the responsibility of the PCR is sufficient and other than maybe falsely positive. That is why the PCR is most sensitive index. Shilmaria cell culture is a test in which the suspected Shilmaria sample is grown in a vial of cells. The pathogen infects cells and after a set incubation period, about 48 hours, the vials are stained and viewed on a fluorescent light microscope. Direct evidence. Cell culture is more expensive and takes longer two days than the other test. The culture must be grown in the laboratory because it is a very infective organism. High, deep, uh, high precaution should be taken. So this is direct evidence. If it is done, that is the gold standard. Otherwise, the ELISA or the rather more specific is the PCR or nucleic acid amplification test. You can do from the sputum also. This uh, or bronchovalvular lavage can uh, diagnose this condition. So this is the diagnosis. The how will this is the chest? You see, this is the um, homogeneous, you know, area is found here in the middle lobe. Opacity, which is dominant, homogeneous. Up till here. Here, 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 here. And there is what is called as the air bronchogram pattern as seen in the near the hyaline area. And this is the again the you cannot differentiate because the other organism can cause the same type of the radiological appearance. So it is not the gold standard or a specific radiological appearance. The treatment of the of the uh, Shilmaria pneumonia is that uh, new generation macrolides that is called the second or third generation macrolides they are improving in stoma and subgroup of patients that remain to be clearly defined. Refractive stoma can be cured by giving these antibiotics. The underlying disease is probably initiating one in the Shilmaria trochomatis and and track, uh, or, or in the pneumonia. The Shilmaria pneumonia is sensitive to the macrolides. Of the, these two, the randomized trials and the other, another macrolide trial suggests that the treatment effect may be greatest in the patient with a severe refractory asthma. Or I already told you, severe refractory asthma. These clinical results correlate with the epidemiological evidence that the Shilmaria pneumonia is positively associated with asthma severity and lab evidence that the Shilmaria pneumonia opt infection creates a steroid resistance. A meta-analysis of the 12 randomized controlled trials of the macrolide for the long-term management of asthma found significant effects on the asthma in symptoms, quality of life, bronchial hyperactivity and the peak flow but not the peak flow rate can be peak expiratory flow rate is better respiratory uh, test rather than the lung function test that is called but not the full expiratory volume in one second more recent positive result of long term treatment with azithromycin and asthma observations and quality of the life of the patients with severe respiratory asthma have resulted in azithromycin now being recommended in international guidelines as a treatment option for these type of patients. So in case of the refractory asthma, where you have uh, tried all of the tools against the asthma and all are failed, then you have to add the macrolide for seven days to see the results. So this is how we treat it. Mostly we are treated by the macrolide. Other options are the quinolones in the adults and the tetracyclines are also can be tried, can be given. Prevention is better than cure. So there is currently no vaccine to protect against the Shimaria. Identification of the immunogenic antigen is critical for the construction of Figus subunit vaccine against the Shimaria pneumonia infections. So how you do it is the isolation mask should be used and the spitting should be avoided. Additionally, there is general shortage of worldwide facilities that can identify diagnosis. Again, diagnosis is difficult. 
So in the, this is in the you know recent advances that it, they they are trying to make a vaccine against this organism. This is the lesson. So this is the Shilmaria something about Shilmaria pneumonia. We should remember some points, not all, if it is possible. Because you are treating asthma, you are treating many things, and in certain uh, you know discussions you can quote their association with the atherosclerosis, with the coronary artery disease, with the multiple sclerosis, with the refractive asthma. I think this is uh, the summary of my uh, talk, and I hope that you can under if you you will be you will be you will be able to understood, and few points should be remembered. Wa ma alaina illa al-balagh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.